Hi, this is me here from BCG Con with yet another interview uh, with a person that I I genuinely feel that nobody needs any uh, introduction for uh, Mr. Eric Lang himself. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Eric without introduction. <laughs> Eric without introduction. So, Mr. Mr. Eric Lang, uh, uh, we're trying to grow this board game community in India, right? Mm, that sounds and, amazing. Uh, yeah, it's, there's such a big opportunity, land of billion people. Yeah. Uh, so, what can board gamers do uh, to grow this community in India uh, to to get the mo to get the love for modern bo modern board games out to a broader ma broader mass? Wow. So, uh, <laughs> so, this how long do you have? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I have this, forever. This is a I mean, this is a question that I mean, I think deeply about because I mean, we're in Asia right now, right? Yes. Uh, I'm stationed in Singapore. Yeah. So I'm seeing that part of the world, yeah. and I'm exposed to all these burgeoning little game yeah. communities. Yeah. So I thought a lot about this, and um, I mean, if there was a magic bullet, right, uh -huh. it would be, we'd have it right now. Yeah. So there is, and every country is different. Yeah. Now, I don't know India very well, and I'd like to change that, uh -huh. but um, my, so my guess is the main, I don't know how to do it, but I can, I think I've identified what the main challenges are, right? The main challenges are, like, there's two. There's infrastructure, and there's a uh, cultural headwind, right? So, um, there's, so we'll, let's start with cultural headwinds, that's an easier one. In Asia, I found that um, there's a lot more cultural resistance to games as frivolous, right? Um, yeah. it, I mean, true. in some part it comes from the religion, because it, it's, it's in the whole text, right? True, um, true, true. And so, and, and not everybody believes that literally, but it comes, it, it permeates the culture, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, and in the more materials countries like Singapore and China, it's frivolous for different reasons, because everything that you do is supposed to advance you somehow yeah. toward a yeah. status or a goal. Yeah. And there's this perception that games don't do that, yeah. right? Absolutely true. So, yeah. so. How do you beat the cultural perception? Is unique to every single country, right? Um, and it's literally just exposure. I think it's just exposure to people, especially the hardliners, right? Like if you play a game. Um, so my wife is infinitely smarter than I am. Uh, one point, played the game uh, with um, with my father-in-law. Yeah. Uh, her dad. That he's just like, oh, I don't play games. Games are a waste of time, yeah. right? That's yeah. how he sounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, she just incepted games. Like you're like, all right, no, no problem. You just no pressure. You just go over there and start playing timeline. Right, just for ourselves, like we're just gonna play this game over here, and we're gonna kind of do it wrong a little bit. Like we're gonna screw it up. We're gonna put things in the wrong. Then he'll be looking over his shoulder, like, like, no, 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 that goes over there. Yeah. Like, no, you're doing it wrong. And like, so you know, he's playing yeah. the game, and he sits down and plays the game. Mister, I don't play games. So playing games with us. Yeah. So you know, as you rightly said, but also one thing, like in a country like India, where there's so many different languages, with Hindi being the national language. Right. So. Since you are the main brain behind C uh, Simon, uh, does Simon actually uh, think about publishing in Hindi, or does Simon uh, Simon actually try and uh, come out with games that are language independent? What is your goal at Simon, or, or does it just because does it be game specific? You know, if a game can be language independent, do you try to make it language independent, or uh, if a game is so good and you really feel it will work good, would it be possible for Simon to even make like? A Hindi version of popular games like Blood Rage, Chaos in the Old World. Sure. Yeah. So you're so those are two questions. Yeah. Um, so uh, language independence is. I mean, yes. Generally, it's in the feature set. So when, yeah. I'm, when we're putting together a game, uh, like, can it be language independent? Is somewhere in there. Okay. It's not usually at the beginning, right? When yeah. for the only, first and foremost, we're trying to make great games. Yeah. Right. And then and try to fit the audience. Yeah. But at some point, usually in the late design, early yeah. development process, then we start thinking, maybe can this be language independent? Yeah. What happens if we if we try to make it that way? Yeah. And then mess around with that. Um, and if we can, great. But usually we can. Yeah. So um, now, when it comes to actually localizing, that is not something that's done internally at Simon or any publisher. Yeah. Generally speaking, when publishers um, have multiple language games, they're always done by partners that are native to that other country. Right. And right. they localize it, which is where the term comes from. Yeah. They localize that themselves. Now, the, the challenge that we have, uh, in India specifically, it's going to go back to the infrastructure problem, which I talked about yeah. before. Infrastructure for gaming. 
uh, requires a number of pillars. It requires retail shops, or it doesn't have to be retail shops, or cafes, yeah. public meeting spaces where people can play the game outside yeah. the home and be exposed yeah. to outsiders, yeah. influencing each other with yeah. new games and experiences. Yeah. It requires um, uh, organized play, yeah. which is uh, sometimes funded by publishers, but yeah. usually and better um, funded and started by grassroots yeah. gamers that are what we call alpha gamers, yeah. people yeah. who are leaders in a community yeah. okay. and building that. Um, and three is network uh, yeah. connectivity. Yeah. So the advent of meetup.com, for example, is huge in something like yeah. Singapore, right? Because then you get to see a the community is really large. Now you need all those you need all those three working yeah. in tandem, and then and then the commercial yeah. element starts to come in, yeah. right? Then you start to attract uh, big actors in the industry from outside. So like a company, for example, like like uh, come on, yeah. uh, we 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 have. I mean, you know, there are like 200 plus countries in the world, right? We have yeah. infinite opportunities. Yeah. We have to decide how to spend our resources. Yeah. So we look at like, where are the biggest opportunities and where um, and where is the least amount of resistance. Uh, India poses a very specific problem to us because I've found no infrastructure at all. I and don't see any connectivity. Yeah. I don't so, see anything like that. Yeah. So slowly, board game cafes are growing. Right. Uh, uh, in uh, in me in mega cities like Bangalore, Mumbai, Delhi, right. and the 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 community is growing. You know, pe people more and more people are getting uh, getting to know about modern board games. Like uh, I know of a cafe in Mumbai called Chai and Games. Uh -huh. uh, they almost every day play Chaos in the Old World, Blood Rage. Oh, that's so cool. You know, yeah. They, they love you. They love you as a designer. Every day, I love almost. You guys too. Yeah, Ronak from Chai and uh, Chai and Games. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So coming on to that, uh, so you have you have a great fan following in India, right? I, I'm 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 a part of this uh, board game community in India, uh, where uh, they are trying to actively grow and 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 in that regards, they've started a small convention called MeepleCon from the last three years, which is growing 100x every year. And so this year we've we've uh, rented out an entire big, uh, big, uh, big convention space just like this. Uh, uh, How many for, people? I'm thinking it's around uh, 5,000 people. Right. Yeah. So it and it's just this is the third third year. Okay. So it's growing amazingly, and it, and we hope to continue this and grow the trend in India. Right. So so. And since you have such a big fan following India, what would you like to say to all your fans uh, who follow you uh, uh, every step of the way? I love, love you guys. Uh, finally, uh, we all thank you very much for taking your time and uh, doing this interview. Oh, my I, pleasure. I, I hope this will help lots of budding game designers and game publishers in India to know just know your brains, know your thoughts and uh, it'll sure help them a lot and thank you so much for talking to us i'm sure your fans in india will really appreciate this interview thank oh, you so much thank you, thank you. i hope to see you all soon oh wow that's nice bye, bye.